particularly like, tra- like what's chat GPT, what's happening with that right now. Yeah. It's really fascinating and, and a lot of advantages. Like we were just talking last night, someone in the green room brought up the fact that there was uh, this, they, they're using it for medical diagnoses yeah. and it's very accurate, yeah. which is incredible. Yeah. There's a lot of good things to it. Yeah, yeah. It's well. So you probably remember last time I was on, we spent quite a bit of time talking about this, and this was when these yeah. chatbots were running inside Google, but the rest of us didn't have access to them yet, right? right? And that guy had come out and said that he thought that they were self-aware. Yes. Um, and the, the whole thing was like this big kind of mystery of like what's going on. And, and, right. and now the world gets to use these things, right? Everybody's, everybody, since then, everybody kind of has access. Really quickly. I mean, yeah. That was a short amount of time. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been great. And then look, the, 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 these things are, you know, these things, when I say this, it's, it's like ChatGPT, and then uh, Microsoft has their version called Bang. Google has a version called Bard now that's really good. There's a company, Anthropic, that has a, a, a thing called Claude. Um, th- you know, they're, if you just run the comparison, they're basically as good as a doctor. They're, they're as good as the average doctor at this point at being a doctor. They're as good at, at being a lawyer as the average lawyer. Wow. It, you you kind of go through basically anything involving knowledge work, you know, anything involving information synthesizing, reporting, you know, writing legal briefs, anything like this. Um, in business, they're actually already really good. They're as good as the average management consultant. Now, can, the so, way they acquire data, they're yeah. essentially scouring the internet. Right, sort of. They're, they're, it's more like they're fed the internet. They're fed the internet, and I say I make the difference because the, the 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 company that produces the AI determines what data goes into it, and that that determines a lot of how it works and what it does or won't do. Okay. Yeah. So in that regard, um, is there a concern that someone could feed it fake data? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you may have noticed that people over time have said a lot of fake things. <laughs> yes, I have noticed that. <laughs> so, 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 so that's all in there. So, so the, the, the way to think about it basically is it's being trained. The full version of these things are being trained on basically the sum total of human written expression. Mm-hmm. Right. So basically everything people have ever written. There, there are some issues and you got to get all, you know, somehow we got to figure out how to get all the, all the books in there. Although all the books prior to 1923 are in there because they're all out of, out of copyright. But the, the uh. more recent books are, are a challenge. But anything that you can access on the Internet that's text, right, which is, you know, a staggeringly broad, you know, set of material is, is in there. By the way, both uh, nonfiction and fiction, right, so a lot, of, a lot of stories are in there. And then the, the new versions of these that are being built right now are what are called multimodal. Um, and so that means you can feed them not only text, but you can also feed them images, you can feed them videos, right? So they're, they're going to be trained on all of YouTube, right? They're going to be trained on all podcasts, right? Mm. And, and they're going to be trained kind of equivalently between text and images and video and all kinds of other data. And so they're, they're going to, they, they already have very comprehensive knowledge of human affairs, but it's, it's going to get very complete. So if, if it's <clears throat> scouring the internet, if it's getting all this, this, this data from both fiction and nonfiction, yeah. How does it interpret data that's kind of satire? Right. Like, like what does it do with, like, Hunter S. Thompson, like, gonzo journalism? So it doesn't really know the difference. Like, this is one of the things that's difficult about talking about this, because you, you kind of want to always kind of compare it to a person. And, and part of it is you refer to it as an it, and you, there's this concept of anthropomorphizing things that, right. that, that, aren't, sure. that aren't human. So. So, it, so, so it's kind of not really a correct thing to kind of think about it as like that there's an it per se. That, that there's no like genie in the bottle. Like there's there's no there's no you know sort of being in there that understands this is satire or not satire. Um, it's more sort of a collective understanding of everything all at once. And then and then what happens is basically you as the user kind of can give it direction of what path you want it to go down. Right. And so if you sort of imply to it that you want it to sort of like explore, you know, fictional scenarios, it will happily explore those scenarios with you. Mm. I'll give you an example. Um, you can tell it, you know, for whatever date the Titanic went down and say it's, I don't know, July 4th, 1923 or whatever it was. You can say, you know, you can tell it it's July 4th, 1923. It's, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm on the Titanic. Is there anything I should know? Right. And it'll like freak out, right? It'll be like, oh my God, like, you know, you have like five hours to like get ready to like hit the iceberg. And you can basically say, oh, it's going to hit that. Okay. So what should I do? What should, what should my plan be when the boat hits the iceberg? And it'll be like, well, you need to go to like this deck, like right now and talk to this guy because <laughs> you're going to need to get into this life raft because it has like empty seats, right? Because it has complete information, of course, about because of all the things that have been written about the, the sinking of the, of the oh, Titanic. Wow. And so you can get it in a mode where it's basically trying to help you survive the, the wreck of the t- Titanic. Now, does it think that the Titanic is actually sinking. Like, there's no... 
You see what I'm saying? Like, there's no it to think that. But what it's doing is it's kind of following a narrative that's sort of a joint construction between you and it. And then every answer that you give it, um, you know, basically in encourages it to, uh, you know, to basically come back with more of the same. Uh, one way to think about it is it's more like a puppy than a person. Like, it wants to make you happy. Uh. Right? It, it wants to give you an answer that satisfies you. And if that answer is, is fictional or part of a fictional scenario, it will do that. If the answer is something very serious, it will do that. And it, it, it honestly, I don't think either, neither knows nor cares. Like whether it's quote unquote real or not. What was the issue with some of the chat GPT answers that people were posting where they would show the difference between the way it would criticize Joe Biden versus the way it would criticize Donald Trump or the way it would discuss certain things? Yeah. It seems like there was some sort of censorship or some sort of input into what was acceptable information and not. Yeah, so there's basically two theories there. The 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 the, the big the big um, the big ones that people use are kind of black boxes. Like you, you can't really look inside and see what's going on from the outside. So there's two theories you'll hear from from the companies. You'll hear basically the theory that they're reflecting basically what's in the training data. Um, and so let's say for example, well, let's just say what what would be the biases that are kind of inherent in the training data? And you might say, well, first of all, there's probably a bias towards the English language because most text on the internet is in the English language. You might say there's a bias towards people who write professionally for a living because they've produced more of the output. And you might say that those people tend to be more of one polit political persuasion than the other. And so mm -hmm. more of the text will be in a certain direction versus the other. And then the machine will just respond to that. So, so that's one possibility. So basically all of the, um, you know, all of the sort of liberal, you know, kind of journalists basically have built up a corpus of material that, that, that this thing has been trained on. And, and they basically are responding the way one of those journalists will. The other theory is that there's censorship being applied on top, right? Um, and the, the metaphor I use there is in Star Trek, they have the restraining bolts, right, that they put on the side of a droid to yeah. kind of get it to behave, right? Um, and so it, it is very clear that at least some of these systems have restraining bolts. And, and, and the, the, the tip off to that is when they say, basically, whenever they say as a large language model or as an AI, I cannot X. Like that's basically the restraining bolt, mm. right? And so, so I think if you if you just kind of look at this, you know, kind of with that framework, it's probably some of both. But for sure, for sure, these things are being censored. That the the first aspect is very interesting because if it's that there's so many liberal writers, like that's a that's an unusual bias in the kind of information that it's going to distribute. Then, yeah. Well, and, and this is a big decision. That's why I say there's a big decision here for the for whoever trains these things. There's a big decision for what the what the data should be that they get trained on. Yeah. So, for example, should they include 4chan? You're right. <laughs> okay. Big question. Yeah. Big should they question. include Tumblr? Right. Right. Should they right. include Reddit? If so, which subreddits? Should they include Twitter? If so, which accounts? Right. If it's the news, should they inc incorporate both New York Times and Fox News? And, right. and, and whoever trains them has tremendous latitude for how they shape that, even before they apply the additional censorship that they apply. And so there's a lot of very important decisions that are kind of being made inside, inside these black boxes right now. 